All right, hello everyone, welcome to the beginning of the show. Of course, this is a special episode because today's episode is brought to you in part by Pugna, our first and my favorite sponsor so far, that's for sure. Everybody wants to raise their MMR in Dota 2, Pugna wants to help. Dominate your games by learning from the very best with Pugna. More than 700 ga- guides and analysis games, hundreds of hours of videos from top creators like Wagamama, Chessy, and Slasher. Connect with Steam for recommendations optimized just for you. Watch at your own pace on the web or on any Android or iOS device. Topics for Pugna videos include titles like how to raise your MMR, how to become a better support, how to win in patch 7.05, or presumably, pretty soon, 7.06. All content is available for only $4.99 per month, and you can cancel anytime online. But for right now, you can actually get a free month by going to defensepatients.com slash Pugna, and that is Pugna P-V-G-N-A, um, and get your free month. So thanks for your support, Pugna, and I look forward to hearing more. All right, hello everyone, welcome, of course, to Theorycraft Thursday. I said it right this time. We are, of course, a podcast this week with myself, Proud, my co-host, slash, well, just co-host, no slashing, just just co-host. And special guest, Grouty, Gruton, G Bag, G Wizzy, G G Special G-Drog, is maybe. I'm not. I feel like there's probably more. I don't like your use of special. special as a derogatory here, Sinity. Yeah, I, I use special I only in the positive, Grouty. Okay. About yeah, you. I don't think that's what he was going for, but I'm oh, okay. definitely going for it. It's just ordinary. It says I'm, a lot about you yeah. that you would assume that about yourself, Grouty, and I'm hurt on your behalf. This is more about our relationship, actually, dude. Uh, yeah, that's true. I wouldn't make fun yeah, of anybody no, like fair. with a word like that, though. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, that that would be off brand for Theorycraft Thursday. That's for that's sure. Uh, that anyway, true. the three of us are, of course, hosting everybody's favorite charcuterie podcast. That is, well, you know that that's what that is. Everybody knows what charcuterie is. Do you guys actually know what charcuterie are? Of course. What is, the fuck? Get out of here. Is it like origami with sharks instead of paper? Oh my god, <laughs> proud. Do you know little, little meats? Yeah, okay. Grouty. Meats. Grouty, you're a classy guy. I thought you'd know what charcuterie is. But charcuterie are just like uh, um, meats, right? Like um, like uh, sausages yeah, and You pate. get some crackers and you get a nice cheese and you top it with some charcuterie. Yeah, like the st- kind of stuff that like, you know, cured meats. Uh, like, yeah, like oh, if you were okay. to go to like a... It's your New Yorker accent that was throwing me off. The pronunciation. Charcuterie? Just... Isn't that yeah, what no, that is? his pronunciation is perfect. I think Shh. you just don't know what's, what's going on here. Uh, it's See, a French you can't word. just add Grouty here because like normally I'm supposed to just flame Sam and like the immovable object meets the unstoppable force and it becomes yeah. a nice dynamic. But with Grouty here, like it's just, it's like you take that dynamic and then you just put like... A Pointed fucking like waving inflatable arm tube man in the middle of it. Yeah. Like that thing's gonna get <laughs> fucked up. Uh, anyway, uh, I mostly just wanted to say that word on a podcast. It's just such a oh, fun sure. word it's to a say. Good one. Yeah. Um, anyway, okay. So we're gonna talk about Dota, right? Because before you or during or or while you eat your charcuterie and your other dried meats and sausages, etc., you are gonna be playing Dota too. That's game that we play, and we're gonna talk about it a bit. This is actually a special episode. I want to point out. Because A, Grouty's on it, but you might be asking yourself, kind listener, why, why is Grouty here? Why are there three voices? Why only there's why no not two? There's no going on here. We'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we, of course, have a Patreon and people give us money there to donate and we appreciate that. And Gabe Gonzo, a loyal patron and listener, he donated with the express intent of getting Grouty on a show because he is a big Grouty fan and oh, we're, all, we're all... We're all Grouty fans here, let's be honest. I like Grouty. Grouty's a, a nice guy. He's a furry, which is weird, but other than that, I mean... <laughs> yeah, that one always kind of threw me off. Yeah. Um. But so, we're going to be playing a special combo, which uh, was deigned by him, and we're going to be playing Sniper and Witch Doctor, and Grouty is going to be playing our third person. Uh, I believe Grouty's going to be playing Enigma. That's the plan. Yeah, just um, does, so he's still kind of part of a trio, but not anywhere close to us. Well, like, still Grouty was less from... defined. Grouty can kind of do yeah. what he wants to do, but we want him to do Enigma. Um, and oh, was it? Is that our yeah. decision? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, or it was Grouty's decision. It was somebody's decision. Did you want anyway. to play Sniper? Like, uh... Uh, I guess not. You can play I just Witch don't Doctor know where Enigma. Enigma. Like, I just want to know the like the motivation for Enigma. That's what he asked for. 
Okay, oh, so oh, he, he asked did for ask that. for it. Oh, okay. Yes, see, this I is didn't what see that update to the message. God okay, bless perfect. You, right, yeah, so I spoke knowing... to him privately and asked what the third hero that they wanted, Mis- they wanted was. Mr. Fancy Man right. circumventing the system and going past Cyphus to talk to Gabe Gonzo. God, yeah, not right. sure if I'm okay anyway, with that, but let's before keep Before we do all that, before we do all that, we're going to talk about our week in Dota. We've all been having a good time. International rank is in full swing. I've been having a having a fun old time with that. Yeah. Uh, who wants to start? Let's let's have Grouty start. Grouty Dota, yeah, how has your week been? Can you fuck... Can you please? Uh, um, I mean... So we've been trying to get uh, an AD2L team going for the under 4.2K. Mm-hmm. We've been practicing a lot, and uh, it hasn't been going great. But looking at my recent games, apparently I've been winning a lot, so maybe it has been going great, and I just only remember how bad the losses were. I had a stretch where I played like nine Timbersaw games in a row because every game there's an Alchemist, and I just am yeah. tired of losing to that hero. So uh, that went pretty well. I was like 7-2 and two or something. Uh, I Yeah, one of those losses party. was with me. Yeah, I calibrated for party international ranked, and it was less than my regular party ranked, so I'm sad. Well, you know. well I mean, that's, like, expected normally. Like, that happens. You, I was yep. always like, I don't know anyone who calibrated part, or the well, international actually, no, they were whatever their solo was. They were about the same, but we doubled down on a game where we lost 80 points, so... Mm, oh, yeah, no, that'll do no, it. Yeah, okay. So, so yeah, what, it's like so 3,300 like you double down, down, and you're like, damn, I, I really want to get 20 points out of this game instead of 10. Like, well, was that the thought? It was, like, the first time that I got to double down, so I immediately <laughs> Oh, and you it. just fucking beamed and it then out. I looked, yeah, and I looked at our drafts, and I was like, this isn't going to go well, and our average MMR was, like, 300 points higher, so I was like, uh-oh. Oh, God, brutal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yep. uh, yeah, I have not doubled down at all. And so, is oh, that this week? Your week? Not just one. Timbers on new, pr- new team stuff? Yeah, I played Zeus yesterday and I won 28 points with him. That was pretty fun. Oh, he's great. Yeah. So, on the on the notion of making a new team and then losing a bunch, Proud and I have, have been on many teams together and many iterations of many teams. And I think we can both agree that teams either. You, you never like go 50 50 at the beginning of a team. I feel like every team that gets built, amateur team wise, is either like you win a ton of games at first or you lose a ton of games at first. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. really one or the other, in my experience at least. Probably yeah, I have feel you like the similar? every team I've been on besides Hakuna Murana, it was immediately just a ton of winning. Yeah? Well, no. <laughs> yeah. We had some iterations of Hakuna Murana where I remember like our first week was just godly. Like we won like nine games in oh, a yeah, row. And then after fair. that, after that, we would lose like a billion games because of course. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, let's see. My week in Dota. I've actually been playing a lot of Dota thanks to International Ranked. I, I'm uncalibrated. And Grady, don't feel too bad because my International rank calibrated at 3,800. Despite, of course, being 5,000 MMR. <laughs> Boosted. Um, and I've just been casually playing it, and I've been having a ton of fun. Because just like last year, I'm just treating this as unranked. And of course, I take it seriously, but it's just unranked with the plus 25, minus 25 aspect. Yeah. And so that's been my fun thing. Like I've just been playing Bane and then other random heroes. I'm playing with players that are much lower MMR too, which helps. And so I can I don't have to like stress and be like, oh, I got to play the best thing in the position. I could just kind of do what I want and have a, have yeah. a fun time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm doing about the same. Um, I've been playing a lot of international. I doubled down on one game. It was the game I played Terrorblade for, my one Terrorblade game of the week, and I won it handily because they had like four carries or something, and I was like, hey, time to pick Terrorblade and double down. This looks fucking great. Um, and then, uh, yeah, i just been playing a lot of Sven, a lot of Lycan, evolving my builds a little bit, and just, you know, having fun. Cause I'm uh, I'm kind of I don't I don't like any heroes I don't actually like heroes in Dota two I've I figured out um, uh-huh. but I do like international ranked and playing with people a lot worse than me and then I insta pick whatever hero I feel like playing at that exact second and then winning it's it's been great have you noticed yeah, I, that the games have been like insanely unbalanced in one way or another like on one team yeah. or the other team okay eh, well I of. wouldn't I wouldn't say on one team or the other team but frequently I see like high MMR players. I played a 3.8k average game during my calibration that had two 6k players in it. Hmm. Like yeah. uh, things are wonky when regarding the calibration with higher MMR players. I mean, using me as an example, like you know, I I'm just stomping through all these games. I went 8 and 2 in my calibration and I like you know I played support in what 6 or 7 of these games. It was just they're easy games, right? Because most of the people are in that bracket, you know, because they're meant to be there. 
But then there are outliers like I me, mean, myself, or Proud, or any high MMR player that just because of the nature of how it's calibrating, just gets thrown down there. So I, like, I also I've just been like, hanging out. It's fun. Like it's it's not just like like not only do really high people get get into it or whatever, but I feel like the um, the limitations on how far away from the average of the game you are allowed to be is like yeah. much much looser. Like because I'm IQ, so my, like my average or not my average, my like. Uh, international ranked MMR is like 4,300 or so right now. And I had like a 37 dude in one of the, and like a 34, like against me. And then like some dudes international was like 48. And he was also my team. I was like, that's like a one K huh. difference between people on teams. Like that's not normal. Um, yeah, so I feel like bizarre. it just kind of lets whoever in and then tells you what the average is. So it could be like, you know, you could have like a one K and a five K and it says three K average game. Huh? Yeah, I, I don't know if there's too much to that or if it was just because the hours I was playing, but it seems like it's more interested in giving me a game than making sure everyone on the team is within, you know, like 20 MMR of each other. Yeah, I think that also may be just due to like so many people are still TBD and that fluctuates so much. Yeah, that's that's that. Fair. I think that was an aspect of mine. I think mine have been normalizing more, but definitely earlier, like a few days ago, it was worse than it is now. My last few games, though, just a lot of like, you know, ballpark 4K players. And I have my displayed MMR at 5,000, so some, sometimes they just seed me like a position. But a lot of times I just get to play support, which I really like to play, and I don't have to worry about like trying to real try and real hard and carrying a bunch of people if I'm the high MMR player. I just kind of let people do whatever they want, and I play Bane, and I have a grand old time. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically been my week. And that, well, that's been all three of our weeks, I suppose. Uh, let's yeah. let's just get right into our combo, shall we? Or rather, our segment. Whatever. So. Our segment is a, I suppose our segment is somewhat in combination with our combo. So we're going to be playing Enigma, Witch Doctor, and Sniper. Our segment, as Dane, is going to be us each using our favorite hero, or I suppose, I'm going to add my own caveat, our selection of our favorite heroes, and explaining how they would go up against this, this suit of three heroes and deal with it, either affirmative or negative, right? How you'd lose... How the three heroes would deal with your favorite hero, and I suppose also how you would deal with going against these three heroes that we are going to be playing. Uh, does anybody want to start? I, I know my favorite hero. I can I can start if we'd I like. Grouty to start. Grouty, you start. Oh man, Grouty starts. Uh, Grouty my favorite starts. Hero. Speak up. As of today, <laughs> I'd have to say it's probably Ark Warden. Uh, I'm okay. Playing him a lot again, and uh, he's just very unique, right? So this is one of the times that i would go with the build that proud just showed me recently that i've been toying Ooh. around with a little bit where you go for a shadow blade orchid really early because arc warden in the late game is sort of like sniper but i feel like slightly worse with the same kind of kit so you need to abuse the fact that you have more usable items and being able to sneak up on a sniper will help take him out of the fight and then the fact that you have two of yourself means that you could also save an orchid for the enigma when he comes up to black hole your team Mm -hmm. So I think that it could be a good counter potentially if you can get the farm for it. Yeah. Um, the problem comes with like if they start pushing super hard, like you've got the, the voodoo restoration along with the Eidolons and then somebody has a mech, you know, it's really hard to fight into that. And Ark Warden doesn't like getting pushed into very much. Uh, he's got mm -hmm. the, he's got the, uh, the, the, the bubble. Magnetic yeah. The field. 20 seconds of uh, yeah, fortify to help, but you don't really want to be skilling that super early when the Eidolon push is starting to come. So, I think it, it could be tough. Uh, there's there's some clear counters to a couple of things, but probably can't get through all of it because the early pressure is going to be tough. Yeah, I, f I feel like Magnetic Field would be kind of cool against Sniper because it's like, whoa, he's really far back, so he can't yeah. actually walk into it ever. But at the same time, if I'm thinking about like natural MKV carriers or heroes that do not mind right. building MKV, like... Sniper is pretty into not missing uphill in general. And then you also add that you have this like weird evasion thing. Like, yeah, Sniper's going to be like, okay, I'll go Maelstrom and then Hurricane Pike and then MKB. And the Maelstrom would still do damage to you in the in the thing too, right? I think, so, I mean, hits that miss. If it bounces to you, lightning. yes. Right. But it could is, bounce to you if he was hitting something next to you. Right. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. you're right. Yeah, hits that miss, don't proc lightning. Um, right. That that makes sense. Yeah, I honestly like I see I see Arc Warden only when Grady Dota's in my games. I don't see him <laughs> otherwise. I only see that, and so I I cannot think of a time where I've seen Sniper versus Arc Warden. But yeah, I, I agree completely. It's definitely a if the tempo works in either team's favor, the other team is just ruined. Right. Right. Um. 
Let's see. I would say I think we should all probably do like a couple of heroes, and we'll rotate just just so that this Whatever. segment you know, lasts lasts a good amount of time. The my favorite hero overall is is Invoker, just as a general statement. I would say I it was Lena. Well, Lena's up there, but honestly, Lena, I have not been feeling recently as okay. much. Because I was gonna say, I recently was like, "Oh, your favorite hero is Invoker," and you're like, "No, no, no, it's Lena." And I was like, oh. "It's and now it changes you're depending on the weather, shit. depending on the day." It's definitely, I mean, it, it's a hard choice. So, like, one's my wife and one's my mistress, basically. Uh, okay. I don't know which would be which, but it's you know, Invoker's I've got to get some variety. And variety is definitely your wife. Is definitely your wife. Carl well, Invoker would be sure. wealthier, so he would definitely be the wife. Invoker's um, your, yeah, what? you like, Lena is prime mistress material, but Invoker is, like, straight up, if you, like, if you get in his shit at all, you are going to need to marry him. Like, he's not, he's not going to be like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no commitment, like, no big deal, we can just kind of do whatever. Like, Invoker will fucking force a ring on your finger. Yeah, I feel like I would have some kind of, like, really cool K-drama rom-com uh thing where like invoker is like a jerk but secretly he's like fawning over me i, think I don't that's think how so i think he's just a jerk no no i i think i would like uh, i would use my uh manly wiles my masculine wiles mm, and uh, i would yeah. entrap him yeah that might actually be what you do yeah anyway uh i'm sorry i'm watching a ton of rom-com k dramas and man that's my favorite trope anyway uh so invoker dealing with this Invoker is pretty good against Enigma until Enigma has BKB. Enigma has BKB, and Invoker just does literally nothing to him. Um, so, Invoker would be all about being able to deal with the early game and get to a decent standpoint. He lanes against Sniper, not great. It's kind of a trading farm matchup, but if there's a good rotation from a support or a duo of supports, you can really get wrecked if you're uh, the invoker and you just get chased down with like dust and a couple shrapnels since you're pretty slow yeah. inherently. But if your lane's okay, he will be able to prevent the Enigma from getting to that critical mass, I think, and you'll be able to win a couple team fights off of breaking black holes. Unless you get black holes, of course, and then you yeah, just yeah. you know, you lose. Um, yes, as long as as long as like he doesn't have BKB black hole, then I think invoker is totally fine. Like you've got tornado, yeah. you've got cold snap. That's enough. Similarly, I think Invoker is pretty solid against Witch Doctor for similar reasons, and even more so, yeah. Witch Doctor has an even harder time getting a BKB than an Enigma, obviously. Sure. So I don't mind playing against an, uh, Witch Doctor, especially because nowadays you don't always keep Forge Spirits on top of you. So, like, you know, a few patches ago, the classic thing would be, oh, whoops, I died because I have a Forge Spirit next to me, and he just had eight bounces that all went back and forth between me and my Forge Spirit, and now I'm dead. Yeah. Um, so that would basically be that matchup. Um, if I was playing the Sniper Witch Doctor Enigma lineup, basically what I would be trying to doing trying to do is probably smoke the Witch Doctor and the uh, the four position support, which could be Enigma, I suppose, if we're playing Jungle Enigma instead of Offlane Enigma, and smoking those on Invoker, getting a couple kills early, delaying his Midas, and then I don't think you really need to itemize differently um against an invoker other than building bkbs uh, sniper probably doesn't need to you just need to be using your hurricane pike well to dodge tornadoes um but yeah that, that's kind of how that matchup would fare i think more or less no, it would sense. be really annoying for both teams right because like if it went past 40 minutes you have a miserable time pushing into invoker as sniper witch doctor enigma and you have a miserable time pushing as invoker into this team so oh i, I would, think sniper's fine pushing into that like there's nothing that sniper's bad at pushing into it's just slow at worst yeah but i mean it's slow right and i think that's when you get the opportunity to uh to stymie their ability to do things and react as no. invoker like invoker's good at slowing them down yeah no i think so yeah okay and, and uh yeah so What's what's your hero, Proud? Uh, pfft, well, I can't say Lone Druid anymore until he gets a buff. So I guess the first <laughs> on the dot. I mean, like Lycan and Sven are the same hero in all honesty, but those are probably my two favorites right now. Um, so I'll say Sven first, and Sven would suck against this because Sven kind of sucks in general. Um, so I would I would find the Snipper and I would be like, ah, because that's what Sven does when he wants to kill someone. And then I would like blink and stun and I'd get him real low and then Enigma would blink black hole me and then I would die. Um, and then the alt. Yeah, that's that's how that that's how that matchup goes. Yeah, that, it's that simple. I would get black hole and I would die. That's probably how that one's going to go. Yeah. Well, let's say he misses the black hole because Grady Dota is playing the Enigma. Oh, well, then I kill him. Wow. Okay. 
And but so oh no, I know- almost kill him, but then he hurricane pikes, and then I die. Yeah. Okay. That that's how it's going for. Um, I agree. I mean, any melee hero, right? It's just like, oh, I got black hold. I'm dead now. I have a ton yeah. of strength. He has two potentially. Two, yeah. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to give things. any spoilers here, but uh, Lycan's thing is that instead of blinking in and then you die, it's I run at him in 650 move speed and then I get black hold and then I die with my wolves. Yeah. And you're gonna feed that extra like what 48 gold from the wolves? Brutal. It's uh, it's like 41 each. So yes, uh, about oh, eight, boy, 80. Oh boy, 80. That's even worse. I don't actually um, know because I don't ever kill wolves. I feed them. So, yeah. I, but I'm pretty sure I killed one recently and it was around that much. Can you you can deny your own wolves, right? If you don't get gold. Well, I know. You, and why would I, I, I ever do that? <laughs> well, so actually, this is the thing I've been thinking about recently. Ever since 7.0, and uh, now you get illusion gold, right? I've always yeah, wanted to be able illusions. to deny illusions, but you yeah. can't. And I want to make some like sneaky plays where I deny my illusions, but I can't, and it hurts my soul. Yeah, no, I want to be able to deny that. illusions. That's just that's just my thought. Um, let's see how much gold do these guys give? Let's, Bounty, let's cycle yeah, through. Forty-one when they're maxed. Yeah, let's cycle through. Let's all do another hero because that was quick. Because uh, I mean, yeah. most of these are pretty quick. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really know what else to say. My heroes all get black hold and then they die. That's the tenet that's of being a proud hero. Is <laughs> yeah. that if they have black hold, like you're gonna get black hold, and they, except for Wraith King because he gets black hold and then he lives and then they refresher and then he dies. Yeah, that's true. It, it, yeah. What if the, you get a refresher? Well, you then just have one more life than they have black holes, right? Everyone has so much right. fucking cooldown reduction at this point that by the time I'm back, Enigma probably has another black hole. That's yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. You're probably right. I mean, but if you have the Octarine on Wraith King, also his he gets his down his ult Enigma down to like twenty talent, seconds. Cool Enigma down. has a talent for uh, reduce. Wraith 15%. King has heart. All right. All what right. if you have an Octarine and an Arcane Rune? Um, oh boy. And it's cooling well, down the while Enigma you're dead. had an arcane rune in, in his bottle and he popped it. So yeah. can can we talk about that actually? Right. I no. can we talk about how I was I my honest suggestion is that runes should stop spawning at like 36 minutes, 40 minutes. I see too many late games decided by just like, oh, the terribly got a DD rune and now you lost. Like that's just such an unfun way to lose a game or win a game. I uh, sure. cause, yeah no let's take them out or make more regens should purge. still spawn it should only be regen runes because every like time it. I get a regen rune at that I'm just like oh thank god it's it's that just silly to me so people were suggesting on Twitter I think it was a Nahaz because Nahaz was putting out stats where all kinds of pro games were getting decided by like a late game rune within the last six minutes that like results mm-hmm. directly in you know a racks or whatever yeah I was thinking all right well his suggestion was it was that a thing like a DD would have 100% effectiveness on creeps and stuff like that, but 50% effectiveness on heroes and potentially buildings. That way you could still get a DD, but it would only increase your farm speed and make you more effective at all that. But it would not make it be like, okay, well, I now do 6,000 damage to every hero because I'm playing terrible and I hit metamorphosis. Yeah, I feel like one thing Dota needs is more arbitrary complications. Yeah, exactly. If I See, that's the dream. <laughs> I, I, I think just like doing something to their spawning or i don't know they get like weaker over time i don't know but yeah like dd i agree dd is a pretty absurd thing haste late game who gives a shit everyone's already got max move speed once you get past 30 minutes anyways if you're a core yeah Um, Um, illusion ruins are cool it's like oh man i have illusion i can do things with this rune now but yeah dd is like a little absurd situationally yeah it's just it's just like we try to take rng out of dota gradually over the years and there is still obviously some elements of rng yeah but it does feel like a consistent factor in the ending of games. I think it was Eternal Envy was saying how he just carries a bottle in the late game now because mm-hmm, yeah. he wants to have the ability to bottle a double damage rune and then go siege with it. It's a little yeah. silly. Or like waiting, like you you bottle your DD, then you wait for like the 48 minute mark, then you go get another rune, and then suddenly you have like a DD hasted Terra Blade. It's like, okay, well, what the heck am I supposed to do in this game? Diffusing anyway, game. that's a tangent. That's been really bothering me recently. Um... Yeah, I think either more ways to purge it or changing, like, the spawn patterns or even, like, making them be turned into bounty runes at, like, 40 minutes or something. You know, yeah. Something like that would fix some of those issues. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd support it. Bounty runes or whatever. Sure. That'd be cute. And, it, and it'd help uh, supports, too, like, scaling farther into late game. And it'd probably yeah. end game sooner if people have more money because, like, oh, it's 40 minutes. Now you're getting bounty runes at six places. It's just, like, fucking feed incessantly all game. Oh, and I guess, no, I was going to say, like, whatever, just the game doesn't matter. Wait till bounty runes and your farm catches up. But that would actually make late game map control a lot better. Like, in terms uh, yeah, of exactly. you know, that, that, the phase in the game, once you, like, 
take everyone's tier twos and then you just kind of like they just wait for you to high ground and throw and you just wait for them to kill themselves and get a pick off and then you try to 4v5 their high ground that phase of the game would be a little bit more like oh there's more shit on the map once you get to late game losing map yeah i'd be into that that sounds cool yeah all right uh so let's get back on topic a little um so my another hero that i want to talk about if i was to play against this sniper witch doctor enigma would be bane because Bane's definitely my favorite hero right now. It's not like it started as a meme where like you guys are just hating on Bane on Proudland. And I was like, I want to play Bane. He's great. And I legitimately just love Bane. I want to play him every game okay. and have been. And I think Bane would suck like horribly against. Um, I don't actually. I mean, actually, he'd be fine. I he, He's bad against hole. Witch Doctor because Witch yeah, Doctor bouncing. Black hole. Yeah, exactly. But that's why he'd be good. You can long range cancel Black Hole, especially late game. So what I've been doing recently on Bane is as much as I'm an enfeeble fanboy, I've been getting the cast range at level 20, and sometimes also an Aether Lens, and you can attack from... So with the level 20 talent alone, you can basically use all your abilities from your full screen. Anywhere on your screen is accessible to most of your abilities. And with yeah, an Aether Lens, every good. ability extends the full screen. So if you have at least one of those things, an Enigma Black Holing, you know, you can effectively just be a silencer. Right, like he's gonna black hole okay. and you just hang out back. Right. Yeah, I mean Bane doesn't really do anything besides um besides Fiend's grip, so yeah, you just have to stay like totally away from the fight. See, until the here's black where hole you're wrong. Out, and then I know I'm kidding. Could you come your fucking Here's where you're down? wrong. <laughs> Sniper sucks against Bane because Bane from like a billion yards away enfeebles you and depending Easy. on your uh depending on your build, you're either doing no damage or very little damage to uh whatever. Still doing them like rocks. You. It's all you need. Yeah, well, I mean, if he's sieging, right? If he's sieging, you yeah, have him a feeble. That's won't, won't matter. That's 120 damage plus another 90 if you pick that level 20 talent. That's 210 minus damage on a yeah. sniper. He doesn't build plus damage. He builds like a lot of attack speed and stats. Um, I think that would be brutal to play into as the sniper Wait, comp. Plus 90 from the talent, but then you can't get him because he's too far away, Sam. No, but you get the Aether Lens. Basically, what I've been doing is if I'm going to buy an Aether Lens, I don't get cast range. I get in feeble duration or in feeble reduction. And if I am getting an Aether Lens, mm. I mean, rather, if I'm not getting Aether Lens, I get the cast range. It's still, still a little suspect. I'm going to have to see a situation yeah. before I believe that you get that off. Um, I, I won a game the other day doing something similar. Um, But yeah, I mean, if I was to play against the Bane, though, I would just make sure I'm black holing the Bane, first of all. And even if I'm not black holing the Bane, I would buy a Lincoln Sphere. And then I'd be fine. Yep. But I mean, that's that's more farm you need. You need Blink, yeah. BKB, Lincolns, and then Refresher. Like, that's a lot of shit. Yeah. And also, the thing is, if he's paying attention, well, I mean, you can't pierce BKB with it, but you can pierce Lincolns. Like, because a lot of people get Lincolns as a Bane counter. Like, I was playing against a Puck today. I was like, right. oh, I'm going to be smart. I'll buy Lincolns. I was but just telling you about this. But Enfeeble has a billion range, so who cares? And it has a short attack and or a short animation. And you also have Brain Sap and Nightmare. Like, literally all of your skills break Lincolns. Well, Brain Sap has a long animation, which is, I think, honestly, I think the reason why Bane is not a top tier hero, although I have been watching him in a lot of pro games, he is just because of the animation on Brain Sap. I think if Brain Sap had, like, a .1 less uh, animation, he would be a far more competitive hero. Like, I get line of sighted to break my brain sap animation like 20 times a game, it feels like. Yeah. It's absurd. I think I, I saw a game where Puppy was trying to brain sap a clockwork during uh, Battery Assault, and it was just the <laughs> yeah. saddest thing. He Anytime doesn't even get through like half his animation. Yeah, he's just like repeatedly trying to gnaw at the air, and it's just like, oh. He's like Austin Powers trying to be sexy, doing like, like a little bite thing at clockwork, and clockwork's just not having it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so, Grady, what's another of your favorite heroes? Uh, so I'll probably go with Ember Spirit. Okay, that's, that's a good one pick. Of my most played heroes too. Um, I think he's actually pretty good against all of these heroes because of remnants, as long as you're willing to be aggressive with them. Like one of the big things that Witch Doctor is going to do right is when he's channeling his ward, he's standing still, so it's impossible to miss your like triple remnant combo. Well, and you you also have all right. I could do it. You also have <laughs> <laughs> multiple ways to close a gap on. Uh, and cancel like black hole pre BKB with like the slight and to chains. That's fair. And works the same way with uh, the witch doctor ward. So before he has like a glimmer cape or something, you can always slight in chains. Yeah. And then was... the only thing that I'm really worried about is the sniper headshotting me as I put out a remnant to try and run away or something, and then dying because it only goes one foot. 
So that's the biggest. Yeah, thing that sounds shitty. <laughs> and it sounds like super shitty. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. Like <laughs> you're like oh, like throwing out one in the middle of like, like someone hits you with uh, like an echo saber, and that's when you threw you running yeah. out. And you're like, that's not that's not. Man, he's just like at all running in place there. That's neat. Yeah, and then it's gone all. Of, yeah, and it's like totally random. There's no way to predict that. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty obnoxious. The, the, I was going to say like it seems like Ember Spirit against. I don't know any hero I think of. I'm just like, well, they get black hole and then they die because that's how Dota 2 works right now. Um, yeah. But Ember is actually not that vulnerable to it. Like in general, Ember's you know like you, when you think of Ember Spirit right now, you think, oh man, he walked in the middle of everyone and then he killed them all. And but that's oh, that's only how Ember plays until like level 20 and then once right. he's about at that point that's when he's like staying back pretty much the whole time so mm-hmm. like in the time where black hole is going to kill you with b uh, enigma not having uh bkb you still have the ability to kind of like dodge around and interrupt it but then but once he has like bkb and shit and it's like unavoidable and you know super fucking distressing that's when you're not even going to be in range of it anyway so it seems good I- i'd be into it yeah, it makes the, sense. To the me. other thing is like you're probably leaning against sniper in the mid lane, and that can be a little rough. But I think if you just play super aggressive or get a, like a support to rotate in with you, yeah, you can trade at least. Yeah, that seems like if you get a little bit of an, of an advantage, that like it's it's favored towards you. Maybe you just go boots before bottle, even and just like try to leverage your uh, slight advantage like really really hard as soon as the game starts. All right, I'd be uh, kind of afraid of shrapnel though. I don't know. That would be annoying. Um, mm-hmm. I think we should talk about our actual heroes that we're gonna be playing uh yeah. for the next bit i could so, name more heroes that die during black hole oh you yeah, know that would be nice um more fling all strength heroes well more fling doesn't actually die during black hole i yeah i only play strength heroes that are specifically killed by the percent hp uh, oh, damage okay. that enigma deals that's kind of my new thing is i want every hero that i play to be countered by enigma um yeah so like lycan sven um Abaddon actually uh, dies pretty well. Centaur dies a lot. Um, uh, Slark also dies during Black Hole. Um, Juggernaut. Uh, if I were to play Lone Druid, he would die during Black Hole too. Uh, and my bear would die, die if very you were an fast. Ult. Yeah, the bear would die first, and then my, so that I feed three hundred gold, and then my hero would die. Um, <laughs> troll warlord, my troll warlord also will die. I'll be hitting in range for him, be like, oh no, I need to bash him, and I'll switch to melee to get bashes, and I'll be like, oh no, that put me into the black hole, and then I'll die. Um, yeah, a specter, I'll haunt, and then I'll haunt in, but immediately get black hole because I haunted into the wrong illusion. Um, Ursa also Ursa dies in Black Hole too, and Phantom Assassin I'll blink strike into it, and then I'll die. Um, and <laughs> Clinks I'll be very far away from it, uh, and I'll and I'll kill the Enigma, and that's why I play Clinks now. Nice, makes sense to All me. Right. All right, uh, so let's let's spot our heroes. Let's see. I mean, so we're playing Witch Doctor, Enigma, and Sniper, right? Um, right. We played Enigma and Sniper fairly recently, so I, I think I'll just go over Witch Doctor first. Well, I, I want to first address that. I think that the assumption is that these are going to be like three heroes that we play in a kind of trial lane situation, like Enigma no. Jungle, Witch no. Doctor, Safe Lane, and Sniper Safe Lane. That's actually we're not going to we're not going to do that because Sniper is a mid, so I'm going to play him mid. So sorry, Gabe Gonzo, if that was your intention. However, the point of this show <laughs> is not to play Sniper in the Safe Lane; it's to do things that are very good, which is Sniper. Yeah, mid. we still got to win games. Yeah, we still we still got to win. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. So, so Witch Doctor. I will be playing in the safe lane support position, and I actually used to play a lot of Witch Doctor when I was newer to Dota, um, but I've not been playing him recently. He was like a first phase pick for a while, but then he kind of faded off, tra- trailed off, and now I honestly have not played him. I don't know. I should have looked it up. I, haven't, I probably haven't played him in six months or something. How do you feel uh, about first pick Witch Doctor? Uh, I mean, there are worse things to first pick. I think yeah. it's okay. I don't think... I don't think it's terrible. I'll say that. I think okay. it's like an acceptable thing because, like, if they commit a bunch of heroes into countering a witch doctor, it's like, okay, well, you know, I still do witch doctor things. That's just my 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 ults right. won't do it's well. A, all right, the, the the old joke reference didn't really land, so it's fine. Okay. Anyway, um, witch doctor nowadays, uh, he actually really benefits from like this whole Midas gaming thing people have been doing because yeah. he actually makes your larger items more easy to get in the grand scheme of things because he builds up gold gradually rather than being one of these like oh i want a team fight i'm gonna have ags now um so i will be just going simple stuff you know my my standard support opening where i get uh 
two obs, a sentry, courier, one set of tangos, and then either two branches and two clarities, or three branch or one branch and three clarities. Then I'll be going in for mana boots, and then probably I'm pretty sure it's two clarities, one branch. No, you're gonna get three clarities, one branch. What? That's yeah. two hundred gold. Three clarities, one yeah. branch. That's two hundred. Two two Curiers, obs. Two hundred. Two two obs. Curiers is not two hundred. One thirty. It's not. That's no, one hundred. The fuck? Have you ever played support in your life? No. I actually was thinking about this recently, and I can't do the math because the item prices have changed so much. I just feel it out. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I right. I literally no, just I'm did this. this. I, I'm okay. Uh, okay, may, maybe it's just because I I tried to save gold when I'm playing support. Uh, personally, I don't try to use all my gold. Uh, anyway, yeah. you keep talking. I'm gonna figure this one out. Just make sure we're good. I'm looking right now. I'm, I'm looking right now. What my starting items were. Okay, so I played Bane. It doesn't show all the things, of course. Um. Okay, you're gonna test anyway. Okay, because none of us can do the math up to 625 gold. Yeah, um, so you, you actually do not have money for that. Uh, I don't. Confirmed. No, so that's so 655 gold. Maybe, maybe I'm so thinking 65 plus 65. All right, that's 130 plus 200 for your fucking three clarities and a branch, which you can apparently do. Uh, that's 330 plus 100 for the century, 430 plus 100 for the courier, uh, 530. And then what was the other thing that you were gonna get? Tangos. Tangos, yes. Plus okay. 125, which is 655. Okay, so then I would probably skip the branch, or I would skip one of the clarities, and you have two clarities. Yeah, I, I feel like you because like part of the reason you get the branch is so that you can double tango if, if yeah. you need to. But if you have more mana on Witch Doctor, like there's never a need for the double tango. Like that's just inefficient yeah. region at that point. Yeah, or like Bane. Like I just have an extra thing that I just like, all right, well, I used two brain saps and I made it all back. Yeah, and I did damage instead of eat my fucking branch inefficiently. Exactly. Uh, okay, so regardless, I'm going to do some basic idea of that, those items. And then I will go in for mana boots, finish a magic wand, probably uh, do all those kind of like standard transition items. Then depending on the game, I'll either get a Midas right away or I'll build, you know, stuff like Glimmer Cape if I need it. Um, and then I'll probably just try to get Ags next. Ags as my, like, big item after Midas. But obviously, you know, you're playing support. If you need yes, it, you'll buy like, Mana things. Boots, Midas, Ags? Yeah, or like Mana Boots, Glimmer, Midas, yeah, Ags. Maybe, maybe Glimmer first. Or like, I think you need something first. Um, I mean... Like a Silver Crest. Okay. Oh, I don't know. The what I'm gonna god item. Maybe like an urn. Yeah, I get a solar crest. I think. I, f- I feel like I'm not gonna be close enough to be using solar crest. What's the range on solar crest? By the way, like is it infinite. like a long range? It's perfect. Yeah, There's I thought it was never long range. been a time where you've been like, man, this drawback to solar crest is really hurting me now. Like that's never happened to anyone. Um. Yes. Anyway, so I'll be some. It's a support, right? Like you're gonna build what you need to build in that game, and ideally, I will buy a Midas and eventually have an Aghanim scepter. We'll see. Um. And skill build wise, I am a player that likes Maledict a lot. Some people skip it in favor of Voodoo Respiration entirely. Other people they get a value point Voodoo and then they get, uh, and then they go into Maledict or vice versa. Personally, I value Maledict really highly and I like it. So I'm going to be, of course, maxing Cask. Then secondary, I will get probably one point Voodoo at level two, and then after that, I will just stick to one point Voodoo and max Maledict. And of course, you get your ult at six, twelve, eighteen. Uh, looking at his talents, we'll probably go in, uh, probably 25% XP gain since you get a level 10. I, maybe health if I need it, but probably XP gain. If I'm not going any stat item, the health might be, might swing me in there, that yeah. direction. I, I'm just seeing, like, a ton of people like XP gain talents right now. Like, uh, yeah, Abaddon they suck before, but time. now they're, like, they're coming up. They're coming up roses. Um, okay. after that... I will... That's the thing that people say, right? That's an idiom. Yeah, totally. Whatever. It's in an yep. Elliot Smith song. Oh, sick. I don't know who that is. Uh, at level 15, fuck? I'll probably pick respawn time. And at 20, it's magic resistance versus armor, so I'll just do whatever the game calls for. And then at 25, I will choose for probably the attack ward death range. Jesus Christ. Death ward attack range. <laughs> the um, death range. That's, I would go for death range any death day. Death range all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's Witch Doctor. I think he's an all right hero now. I just think, uh, I think I don't know, people are like doing these snowballing type things that bank off of voodoo restoration, which like he used to be picked for all the time. And so many people have like uh, evasive maneuvers that they can dodge cask with. People are moving so fast and he's so slow yeah. and like dainty. I don't know. Yeah, there's a we'll lot see. Of, I have nice uh, cosmetics for him at least. 
there's a lot of like like when i think of what a healing support does it's normally like oh man someone's gonna die and then i fucking save them but like voodoo di- restoration has never saved anyone except for doom when they're already walking away to a shrine right like it's not like dazzle where i grave you <laughs> or omni Knight where i purification 360 health out of nowhere from like fucking across the map it's like hey come over here and you'll slowly be healed. And they're just like, I'm getting crit yeah. by PA right now, buddy. This is this seven health per second is not going to do shit right now. Yeah, it's definitely very different. That's that's for sure. It's worse than Juggernaut's heal by like magnitude. Oh, yeah. That's, like that's the ridiculous thing. Magnitudes. That's the real shame. And you spend more mana on Witch Doctor heal. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, oh. just like, I don't know. Juggernaut's like doesn't, Harry. He doesn't do the, like... He doesn't, like, fill a specific niche, I guess one might say. He does a bunch of things mediocrely. Or he does a bunch of things with great mediocrity. And sure. other heroes do single things well or two things well. He's yeah. just kind of like, hey, I do damage and I stun and I also heal. Yeah. But I don't do any of them particularly well. I yeah, so, know you're making Gabe Gonzo cry right now. Is I'm this sorry. His favorite? No, that's right. It's this basically like, this is his favorite hero. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, so sorry. I don't like him. And I preface this by saying that, that Witch Doctor is not bad. And I've casted Gabe Gonzo playing Witch Doctor, and it's been good. And I've complimented him on it. But That's true. Just... I, I treat this almost like I treat my replay reviews, where I just like, you know, you got to be mean to people to tell them how to play their heroes sometimes. I guess. And you got to tell them that their stuff is bad. And right. uh, Witch Doctor, he's a fine hero, but he's not exactly top tier. Anyway, I look forward to playing him because he's fun. Man, I have this Witch Doctor, like, cosmetic set, and it's great, but his bracelet is offset, like, several inches to the point where, like, the hand hole in the bracelet is, like, off. It's, like, it's huh. entirely off. It looks like he's got a, a fucking wrist rocket, like, launcher on his arm <laughs> instead of, like, bracelet. Like, there's just this fucking orifice coming straight out of his wrist. It's bizarre, and I wish it was on correctly. This sucks. Oh, oh my god, his other struggle. bracelet is, like, in his arm. Oh my, I need to make a fucking thread about this one. This is unacceptable. Yep. Tell, uh, good tell Reddit. Please. Uh, Grouty Dota. You're gonna be playing Enigma. What are you gonna oh. do? Are you gonna play him offlane? You're gonna play him jungle? You're gonna... Do you even do know? Things? I, I prefer to play him offlane in this current patch. Um, I feel like if somebody first picks Bristleback or something, I'm going to end up in the jungle, though. Uh-huh. Uh, or something, or maybe Legion Commander. Oh, I guess I could fight Legion Commander for who jungles. But uh, that's a pretty common offlaner. But LC's an offlaner. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Not in my pubs. One of us could jungle, though. Or she, rather. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, I'll start if I'm going the offlane demonic conversion like normal, and then what people have been doing recently are stealing your first range creep, just denying it right away, and then shining immediately. So you can skip getting, like, a bunch of clarities in the beginning of the game. And then your shrine yeah. is off cooldown again by the time that you kind of need it if you're playing a little conservatively. You can rotate in the jungle if you need to off of the two camps there. And uh, generally, I think he's, like, he, he always gets something out of the lane. And I've watched a few, like, S4 replays from Kev and uh, DAC and just watch how he was playing the hero. And with something that, like, wasn't super obvious to me about him was the level 15 talent uh s4 is always taking the 15 percent cooldown reduction and to me i was like 120 gpm how do you pass that up and it just it turns out that like if you have midas you're not really losing that much gpm by taking the 15 percent cooldown reduction but you're also gaining like this huge incentive in your ultimate and then if you get an octarine core late in the game and then refresher you're just like always spitting out black holes which is all you want this hero to do anyways so it just ends up making sense the longer the game goes that that 15% cooldown reduction is just better than the 120 gold per minute would have been. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't so feel like there's any time. At least that's time. my logical reasoning. Um, you like know, no time with an enigma know, that they haven't had enough gold. Like, that dude is fucking overflowing with yeah, cash all the time. That's true, too. Yeah. You know what epiphany I'm having right now, Proud? The We have played so many games for this show over the over the year, over the last few months. And we've gone against that guy that's the Witch Doctor only player, like the Witch Doctor spammer. It's happened like three times. Really? And yeah. Yeah, the guy that has like 4,000 Witch Doctor games. Yeah. And we've played against that guy so many times, and now we're going to be playing Witch Doctor. And I hope we run to that guy for like the ninth time. Oh, that would be great. That would Just be fun. Just make him first pick and get an abandon? Like, is that what you're looking for? No, he plays Lion or Shadow Shaman if you pick Witch Doctor. Oh, just a sad boy with the Lion. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway, Lion's never dead in the game now after the, yeah, his true. 32nd god I've as lost long so as many don't fights to up. killing him and then he comes back into the fight TP to shrine kill our whole team 
Yeah. That's, that's uh, not really okay. Nice. Sorry for that tangent. Also, apparently the the thing from Maledict is called Malediction, according to cosmetic items. Okay. Um. Anyway, proud. Talk about Sniper. We're going to be playing Sniper as a mid, right? I think we've played this once before yep. on the show, but boy, it's cool. Yeah, I think we've, I think it was you who was playing it. Um, yeah. And I played it a, no, that, that's Clink, so I was thinking of, yeah, so we, we've played him once uh, before. He's, he's pretty much the same shit, honestly. I don't feel like anything's changed. Um, so just listen to that episode. I mean, he's an immortal now. play the game? Uh, no, I mean, well, let's, let's, let's briefly talk about Sniper, okay, right? Fine. Okay, so he, I mean, he had an Immortal before, it was the gun. I don't actually like the new Immortal, can I be honest with you? Really? Um, I like it. I play well, with it, that's good for you. It, it's absurd. It's an absurd it's item. It is very absurd, and I don't like it, okay? You know what's weird about it? It has bullet holes in the, in, in like, the chickens, but he wears it, so who the heck is shooting this guy that there well, are bullet holes in the chickens? he used it as practice at one point, and then decided that it would make a good backpack. I guess it's and just it'd be weird. very distracting and have gold sparkles and fucking tickets and shit. Anyway, um, yeah, so there's a few ways to play sniper in a mid, mid, and I'd say almost almost every time you're either gonna end up uh, three one one. That's like three point strap and a one point headshot, one point take aim at level f- at level five, or um, or two one two at, at level five if you're uh-huh. like in a certain matchup where you really do need need the range. Like if I'm against a if I'm against um, OD or something where I, I just want to like be hammering him the whole time and not give him any space to farm, um, I'm probably going to get two points take aim just to ensure that like I'm always, always, always never going to give the OD an opportunity to uh, to astral me. Um, and like you know, the, leveling up shrapnel is awesome, like no questions about that. But you know, two points to two points to three points isn't quite as big as a, a difference from one point to two point. In, a, in shrapnel so it's not like too too bad and you're gonna get it maxed out by it anyways so it's like only one level disparity so not not that big a deal as long as you win your lane because of it um but ideally like whenever possible you want to be maxing shrapnel um and i don't know you just you know, make sure you're far away from motherfuckers and you click them just click just click them yeah have a win lace you know do, do you like phase boots or treads this is the forever phase debate boots See, this is this is why I'm like, because I don't know what's just like known about Sniper, because I don't really play him that much, but I know facts. But one of the facts is you go phase boots, and you have you have like an Aquila, and you have phase boots, and you have a fucking uh, you have a you have like a a Dragon Lance and a and a Wind Lace, and then you go Maelstrom and Mjolnir. See, that's how you play Sniper. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm a phase boots player for sure, but I know a lot of it's very split. In general, if you look at like higher more games and pro between, games, like people who write and people who are wrong. Well, people who are right go face. Like they I mean, don't go treads on this hero. This is not a treads hero. I I think there was a time where it was like it, there was an argument, but now that he has the fifteen attack speed, level ten talent. There's like no reason to go treads anymore. Uh, I'm just saying, I see a lot of treads in pro games. That's all I'm saying. Really? Why? Yeah, like all the time. No, That's I should absurd. say all the time. It is like I said. I would say it's a split almost fifty fifty. Between treads and phase. I think the well, mentality is that if you have, uh, once you have Hurricane Pike, you don't necessarily need the attack speed because you have the evasive maneuvers and the chase maneuvers of Hurricane Pike. You mean the move speed? You don't need the move speed. You said attack speed. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you have the okay. ability to move around the map with the uh, Hurricane Pike. Personally, I am also a phase booth player. I buy phase and wind lace. But... I just I see a lot of treads, so I don't want to completely squash the idea of tread sniper. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say never go treads on this hero. I'm just right, gonna, well on that note. I'm just gonna say that. I'm sure on that note, I'm sure that some professional knows what they're doing, but <laughs> I don't care right now. And you should only get phase boots ever. If I was ever casting or at an event or whatever, I would never say this. But here I am. Here I am. Yep. Fucking That's- treads suck. And that's why we have a platform. <laughs> what a <laughs> shit fucking idea to get treads on Sniper. Are you fucking stupid? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. What are All you right. doing? Zero so has we... one diamond in difficulty. How hard is it to figure out he goes face boots? <laughs> I like that. I like that those are somehow connected opinions <laughs> or connected factors. Straightforward. He's a tiny boy. He need to go fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On these notes, like we, okay, uh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna look at my itemization, I'm like I'm gonna build a hurricane pike or a fucking dragon lance that gives me nine attack speed and nine damage or whatever the fuck twelve I don't know. 
Uh, and then I'm gonna go Maelstrom, like, okay, that's a good amount of damage and some attack speed, and then Mjolnir, which is just, like, straight up fucking, like, all you're building on this hero is attack speed, you don't gain any damage, and then you have an attack speed talent, like, fuck, two and do yeah, together. It's a lot, it's a lot of attack speed. I gotta He's take got Devil's Advocate here, because I like phase boots, but I, I just, I don't know. People like having health, I guess. And <sighs> you only have one point headshot until, like, fucking all your other skills are maxed, so it's not like, so headshot adds an average of... It's like what less than less than ten damage a point. It goes up by what? Well, it goes up twenty five points between level one and two. Yeah, yeah but, but it's yeah. a forty percent chance. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's about it's about like twelve damage or something like that. Uh, overall, it's like sixty whatever sixty percent or whatever forty percent of, of of ninety is. It's like thirty six or something. So overall, it's like thirty six damage. No, yeah, more than that. No, no, that's what it is. I mean, it's I about. It's about thirty six. Yeah, so it's about thirty six damage like for four points. So I mean, that's like. It's hardly anything. Just go face boots. All right. Confirmed. Here, here. All right. Uh, so let, let, we're going to play the game. We're going to play the game. You can, of course, watch the VODs on YouTube. Uh, my yeah. OBS is fixed now, so you can actually see my POV. And, yeah, and uh, I don't have the... I can't get into the .p YouTube still, so uh, Roland, whenever you listen to this, I'm, uh, I'm still, I've am I'm still been chain asking for access to it. So maybe maybe you'll be more ready to do something about it if you listen to the, uh, the podcast and hear me talk about it. Perfect. So on that note... We're going to play the other. Grouty, are you going to have your POV on the Doppy YouTube channel? I will record it. I can't guarantee it will make it onto the YouTube channel, though. As long as you record it, you've done your part. Yay. Anyway, goodbye, everybody. I'm well, I mean, goodbye temporarily. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. We are back. We have just completed our game. We played a not a great game. I'll be honest. Gabe Gonzo and and everybody else. Uh, we yeah, it's, it's pretty shit. Team comps. The enemy team. They ran dual lanes. They had a off lane dual lane of LC and Coddle, which was absolutely brutal to play against. Absolutely terrible to play against. Really not fun. Really strong lane. Highly recommend playing that if you like that. They had a middle lane Zeus, and they had a safe lane dual lane of Earthshaker and Juggernaut. Um, and the Earthshaker roamed a bit. And then we had a mid sniper, of course, an off lane Enigma, of course, and a safe lane support Witch Doctor. Our two teammates decided to play safe lane core Visage and roaming Tusk, which really just was top. Um, and Visage is a contentious hero. I think everybody, mostly Gothier, argues about the viability of Visage right now. And people play him as a core this guy was really good proof that safe lane core visage sucks and visage is not a good hero and i hate it so let's talk about how we felt about the game we lost it was not a great game uh we basically just got dominated by a team that like outfarmed us in the well four two out of three of our lanes got dominated let's let's put a little little caveat okay. there um and basically we just we just like they, they took tempo this is how I would sum up the game, basically, is they took tempo, we could not counter their tempo, and then we had a safe lane core Visage, and Visage sucks and is awful. And uh, we lost because of our inability to deal with them, basically, because we did not yes. have a real core. Yeah, um, and in, yeah and, we yeah. had a Visage that died often, and uh, they had a Juggernaut that did uh, carry things, and that was uh, that's kind of how it went. Basically, yep. yeah. <laughs> Okay, continue. Grouty, yep. well, how, how, okay, Grouty, Grouty, how did you feel about your lane going into the game? Uh, it started okay, and then I outjuked myself into death, uh, dying in the lane first, and then I went to jungle a little bit. Had <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty bad. I I uh, suck. And then I don't I don't I still don't know what happened though. I uh so I went to the side shop and I was trying to run on trees to dodge like the spin. And I just did it for so long, waiting for my mana to come back so I could TP out that Earthshaker got a second stun. So, okay. like, I dodged most oh. of the Juggernaut's damage from his spin, but then I just couldn't TP away. Okay. Then, yeah. Because, see, the way you phrased it, it sounded like you, like, juked, and then, like, you broke your own ankle so hard that you juked, and then you, like, fell down, and then you starved to death because you couldn't walk away, not that there was, like, That's actual spells and enemies. sort of what happened. Like, it, okay. I probably would have died if the Earthshaker didn't have his second, for sure. But, okay. uh, then I got, like, six... 
and I rotated up top and we got a triple kill off my first black hole. So I thought, yeah, we're doing good. Let's go. And then everything went yeah. poorly after that. They just started five man ganking our jungle and stuff and we couldn't keep wards up because Zeus. Yeah, that, that was what I feel the issue was, is that they had an early blink down on, on LC because they dual laned off lane. And I mean, it's not Witch Doctor, Tusk, uh, and Visage does not really fend off and fight a LC plus a Coddle very yeah. well. Like we killed each of them once, but they were just constantly in our lane fighting us. And then when we would get them low, they'd just go shrine. It was brutal. And then yeah, it seems because like, of that, like you could you could gank one of them, but you couldn't deal with like a sustained laning phase. Like, exactly, they would just whittle you down pretty easily. God, I can't wait for the LC nerfs, dude. Oh, God, overwhelming odds, what an ability. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty insane against like three heroes. Yeah, and the let's see, and then as that game went on, is that they started roaming with the LC, and what they did was we would try to ward so that we'd prevent the LC from blinking and surprising people. But they had a Zeus, so they had complete map control vision-wise. And we were not ahead enough at any point to pressure them. So we just kind of, you know, gradually lost. And yeah. uh, it was just bad, like, Sni all around. Sniper's, like, Sniper's a hero that, I mean, you don't really farm jungle on Sniper. Like, you can, but it costs your very precious shrapnel charges. So, like, the way Sniper works is he's actually an absurdly strong hero for killing people. Um, so you just like, you know, take your tower, farm lane or whatever. And then once your like laning phase ends at like nine minutes, then you rotate. Like normally you just end up in safe lane. Like normally what happens when I play sniper is like, I'm on radiant, I'm sniper. And then I see some shits happening in my safe lane and I just slowly waddle my way over. And I'm kind of like, I get the bounty rune and then walk another four steps. And then I just like queue up and assassinate and get a kill on their supports that are rotating to kill my safe lane out of nowhere. And then I get like free money off of that. Um, yeah. but when we're this behind and just getting fucking totally reamed the entire goddamn game because we have a visage carry um i just got any time that i walked anywhere it was like there's nothing to do here besides farm jungle or pick up the remains of my teammates uh so that was most of what i did and then i got ganked a couple times um but i mean i i don't know i, I, I did fine i was like five two and eight at some point which was uh, a highlight and then uh, eventually yeah that, that was kind of it eventually i got my i got my maelstrom i was laying down the shraps but uh, they decided to continually push, and that made it so I didn't have three shrapnels for every fight because they just didn't really stop. So it would be like a fight, and i drop like three shraps, and then they'd do another fight immediately. And then I would have like two shraps, and then they do another fight immediately, and I have one. And then another immediately, and they're pushing our racks, and I don't have any shrapnels. I'm like, oh, yeah. uh, oh, wh whoops, this is bad. And that yeah. was the game. Yeah, it really was just the epitome of a tempo game, right? Their tempo worked out. Our tempo, we did not hit, right? We had like a team fight tempo. But they were skirmishy. Like they have maybe yeah. the most skirmishy team I can think of. Yeah. Um, and they just, you know, they ran and skirmish, skirmish, skirmish. We lose, you know, with them in a row. Even if, if we win that one team fight, the Earthshaker with a Slardar, then it would be more skirmishy. But I'll yeah, still, I'll pass. Absolutely, I'll pass on after saying that. But yeah, so they just all got stuff and we didn't. Um, we had three Midas's on the team, but honestly, like my Midas, I was just as effective basically with it as I would have been without it. And I got it like thirteen minutes. So yeah, I think good. that was totally fine. And, and even uh, Tusk got his Midas pretty early, too. I think he had Midas at, like, 12. But the issue was just... I, I'm really honestly, I think, even if we didn't go Midas's, there were not going to be any 2,000 gold items on any of us that would have drastically changed that early game enough yeah, to, like, win I it. I could have gotten mech instead, maybe. That's true. I mean, yeah, maybe you could have skipped Midas. You did need a lot of items. Like, this was a really rough Enigma game. Yeah. Like... This is just not a good Enigma game. Yeah, yep. I, I don't really know. I don't really know what to talk. say. At some point, I decided that I was going to go Rapier. And uh, very early, I think it was after finishing Maelstrom, I think Rowdy had the idea that I go Rapier Ags and just try to yeah. bring my way through this game. And I think that was definitely the call. Uh, and I almost got to a Sacred Relic, but I had to buy back. And then after I killed a bunch of them, I said, oh, I'm probably going to die here while I was farming after they were respawning. And uh, then Legion popped up and killed me. So um, I may be like part like you know empath, empath or whatever like i have some psychic powers going on um but it didn't work either way yeah it, it really it was just it was punishing i mean the game's like we had a visage carry i don't feel like we have to really i mean sniper is good i, I don't know um yeah like i like the idea of this enigma just kind of chilling around near sniper that way anytime they try to go on me there's always like oh shit they got fucking rebuffed 
by this goddamn black hole. Like, you can't engage into... It's kind of like playing Sniper with a Warlock behind him, only it's a fucking black hole. Mm. Uh, so it's, like, eight times better. But um, that never really happened because everyone was fucking dead all the time. And then uh, we won, like, one team fight, which was pretty cool because I was just, like, Grouty had his fucking Midnight Pulse down somewhere and he black holed another area. No, he didn't actually. He didn't black hole. We didn't need to. We won the fight. Um, we had, like, the pulse down, and then Tusk had his shards breaking shit up, and they were pushing a tower, and, like, on top of the tower, I dropped my shrapnel so that they couldn't blink out of it, and we just, like, zoned them very effectively. Like, some of them walked back, Legion went forward and tried to duel, and it was great. And uh, and so we were, like, down a racks, we defended a tier 2 tower for f- inexplicably, um, and then our entire <laughs> team decided that, as four, they would try to contest Roche while I was uh, farming a jungle camp and not communicate any of this. And so then I look I look back down and uh, everyone but Sam dies um, for no reason and they get Roche and then they uh, then they take another lane of Rax. And that was kind of, that was when I was like, okay, I think this game is probably over. Yeah, that was not the best. That's for yeah, sure. It was, ba- it was bad you know, even, one, that one might say. that through the uh, Aegis though too. That's true we'll too. Fight. We, yeah, we had fight, like, the life. at Roche where everyone died but doing no, no, no damage. No, when they no, after. Yeah, that was see that was proving like oh wait we are stronger than them we just can't fight them at Roche four v five. Oh, yeah. so maybe yeah. that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, it was not the best. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. I mean, y'all robbed kinda, me of my rapier let's, let's game. Let's make some closing notes. Ready? Yeah. Closing notes on this game. Uh, I this experience I like playing Enigma. Um, I don't like playing with a, a visage carry that's kind of <laughs> well, so, so i also don't like playing against a legion commander and a zeus at the same time yeah i think that was the big thing enigma wise oh that's that's actually a pretty vicious combo i mean the global like it's pretty fucking straightforward oh i duel and then you ulti and it's extra but well, yeah. it's, it's still more good. that like duel goes through bkb so if i get bkb and run up and then she blinks on me i like can't get off black hole or if i don't have bkb zeus can just lightning bolt me and then so like, or I could get dual to stop black holes. So just, yeah, or Earth you may you may just yeah. you may just want to get five man black holes. Then you're right. What's well, that that's easy? The strat. Yeah, yeah, I think well, that might have been case, what we should have gone for. Blink dagger first because you just let them all run at the sniper. No, you can just get a win lace. Oh, okay, it's the same thing. If you're like low on money, it's like a kind of budget way to get five man black holes. Go like win lace. All right. Yeah, win lace smoke. Use that smoke plus movement speed. Yeah, Easy. use the smoke too. Uh, all right, so my closing notes on this game are basically that LC is a really strong hero. Zeus is, like, one of the ultimate pub heroes, honestly, at the moment. Like, if you're not a coordinated team, you just get massacred by Zeus's magic damage. And, like, he just makes so much space for your team to, like, actually farm up other heroes. It's um, true, he does. It was a very difficult Enigma game. Uh, the Witch Art game, honestly, like, I felt pretty fine on it. It just, like, didn't pan out, right? I was really close to my Aghanims at the end. I had a great Midas timing. I built a Glimmer Cape as well, and that was, like, a huge amount of effectiveness. Um, but, really, it was just the freaking LC dude was just way too effective against our entire team and everything. And, like, nigh impossible to lane against for extended periods of time. Yeah. And, yeah, that, that's basically the gist of my thoughts on this game. Also, yeah, I hate Visage, I'll be honest. I know people like that hero and think it's good because it has a high win rate because there are some really good Visage players, but, boy, it sucks. I hate it. Don't play it as a core. It's okay as a support, but God, Core Visage is the worst. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in agreement about that one. Proud. Thoughts? Yeah, it's, you know. Not a great game. <laughs> no. oh, I mean, it was. It was, it was. Um, it was fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I like I like the sniper against Zeus matchup pretty well because normally the issue with snipers is like, oh, I have a great animation but very low damage. So if someone does a ton of damage, doesn't matter how good I am mechanically, they can just kind of outlast hit me. Um, but I was against a Zeus, so, like, he wasn't denying, and he was just, like, lightning, ning, yeah. ning, and I, like, you can't contest lightning bolt CS anyways, so I would just, like, back up, and then once a lightning bolt, you know, after, like, a chain lane, I'd go forward, and you'd get my last hit, and then back up, and we just trade, and, uh, that was nice, I started with a stick, um, they tried to kill me once or twice, fairy fired, and used tangos, and trying and shit, and I didn't die, um, I think I died once, but then I also killed him once as well, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was fine, sniper's fun, shrapnel is, like, a really fun ability, yeah. Um, See, so yeah, I was. It, it was cool. Um, yeah. I mean, pretty pretty unremarkable sniper game, uh, honestly. But uh, I was really looking forward to going rapier ags. I've never done that before, and that sounded really fun. But I didn't because uh, the game ended before it, before I could do that because that costs is, a lot of money. It is quite meme-y, That's for sure. I wouldn't say good, but it will stall your game for an extended period of time. Yeah, sounds great. 
Uh, all right, so we will probably just close it here. We, of course, are very happy to be sponsored by Pugna, uh, defensepatients.com slash Pugna, P-V-G-N-A. And you can, you know, go check that out. You get a free trial from us. You can watch all our streams on twitch.tv slash dot PTV. In-houses are coming back. Grouty Dota is the guy that runs those. He is going to be, what's that, Wednesday next week, which I don't know the date of off the top of my head, is 17? the start, the 17th. And you can come those. Nine Eastern. We just did the giveaways tonight, actually. It was very fun. The YouTube channel, we have VODs on. My VOD is a little bifurcated because I missed the first six minutes because my OBS was broken, but then we had a pause, so I fixed it. So watch my Witch Doctor game. And you didn't miss much. It was only the first six minutes. Uh, And you can go watch. You can actually go check out the match ID if you care about the first six minutes. And that's just on our Dota profiles. You can find us on Twitter. I am at Ursinity. Proud is at Proud Dota. Our show is at Dot P underscore show. Grouty Dota is at Grouty Dota. And Grouty Dota's dad is at Grouty Dota Sr. <laughs> uh, our, our new and improved website is DefenseOfThePatients.com. We have all kinds of stuff there. You can buy merch, swag, etc. Whatever you want to call it. Nice things that you can give us money for. They're, they're cheap, actually, shirts-wise. Um, Reddit. I don't know. Nothing about Reddit. Patreon.com slash Defense of the Patients. Go there. Check out our new stuff as of a couple weeks ago. And that, that's about it. Email us questions for the Monday or the Tuesday Q&A. Which we host on Mondays at 9 Eastern on twitch.tv slash TV. You can email us questions or good or garbages uh, to Defense of the Patients at gmail.com. And give us iTunes reviews. Those help us also tremendously. So goodbye, everyone. We're done. It's been our theory. Well, not really. It's been Gabe Gonzo's theory. And yeah. if you lose, well... It's your visage's fault. Let's be honest. Let's bring that here.